Welcome back to URM Academy. If you're a rock or metal producer, this is your home on YouTube. Today, I wanted to give you a little clip from last month's Nail the Mix with Jacob Hansen. He came on and mixed 365 by Amaranth and Iron Strengthens Iron by Discarnate. In this clip, he's gonna talk about two things. One is why he uses a pen and tablet instead of a mouse or trackball. He's also gonna talk about some of his workflow techniques, some routing and busing stuff. And this may not seem like the most exciting thing in the world, but if you think about it, you know, if this saves you a few minutes here, a few minutes there, that stuff adds up. Over the course of a year, that could add days to the amount of time that you have to be working on audio instead of messing around with routing and other dumb stuff like that. Since you're gonna be using it the entire time, you may as well talk about it for a second. Yes. Um, the touchpad. Yeah. Uh, people are just wondering what the story is with that, yeah, this the it's it's a little weird and and, and it's funny that uh, that I get a lot of you know questions about it. Well, I've never seen one in the studio. No, so the the th the thing was when I started back in two thousand one when I started using Pro Tools because I I came from another place that that only had tape machines and ADATs and all these old school things and um, and no computers at all. Mm -hmm. So I got Pro Tools and of course there was a mouse. I, I bought a secondhand Pro Tools system just to get started. And there was the mouse and after the first day, my hand was just, you know, eight hours, you know, working on that. I, yes. I was like, like, what? How are you, that's not gonna work. How am I, this is crazy. And then I realized that, you know, because I was doing a little bit of, you know, um, uh, how do you say some some graphic work for a, a, a magazine at a time? And it was just really basic work in Photoshop and and at that time, Quark Express. I don't know if you know that. It was just like a desktop publishing. Or Quark. Yeah, yeah. And and I doing that. At the screen. I just go there and I know where I am exactly. You know, yeah, on the pen itself. And that was just. For me, it just seemed, oh, this is easy. This is natural for me. And it's, and I, my hand was fine for many, many years. I can feel sometimes that I, you know, when working hard and when being excited about something and I, and I start to cramp up a little bit, I gotta tell myself to, to loosen up. But, but, but still after, I mean, so many years, eight hours a day working with the, with the pen, I don't, I, I feel fine really. That's that's so interesting. I've never, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I've just never seen one of these before. No, the funny thing is that that all my assistants that I've had, they I haven't forced them to use it, but they just started using it and being a little, you know, it takes maybe some days before you get all very used to it. But but they just started using it and 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 never stopped. Actually, I I think that many of the 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 assistants that I've had, they just continued using a, a pen and, and a touchpad for for Pro Tools work, you know, because it's there's something fast and easy for me anyway. I use a trackball, but yeah. I mean, I've seen people use that as well, and it's it's great. I think it's um, it's just you know whatever you yeah totally pre personal preference totally yeah. All right, so let's uh, keep going with the. Uh, yeah, with the thing, but um. So, just to clarify, at this point in the process, you would have already brought all the tracks in. Yeah. Would you have made any buses? Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I have all. Right now, I have all the buses ready. Um. That do, do I. Do you mind walking us through those? Yes. Okay. I will, of course, do that. Let's see. Um. I mean, in a it, normally, I would maybe just start with the drums and and build them up, you know, including the buses. Right now, I have everything in here, uh, just because I wanted to make it easy for this this thing. But but let's let's go. Let's see. I have um, I have a bus where all the kick drums are ending. This is the one, and then, then I have a, an overhead bus um, where these two guys end, and there's a duplicate of that that I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with in a moment. 
and another one which is also a duplicate of the overhead bus and that with that I'm going to create a, a some kind of a fake uh, ambience track. Yeah, because there were no rooms with this. There were no rooms, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be the overheads that are going to be turned into an ambience track, um, a room track simply. And then I have all my toms are ending on on two buses here that just treat it a little differently. So it looks like you you have parallel buses and ready to go. I do, yeah, yeah I do. And some reverb for the toms, reverb for, for the drums. It's the funny thing is that that these things stay the same on many of the mixes mixes that I do. I just I I choose different drum reverbs depending on the style, type of song and whatever, you know, whatever I feel like. If if you know one day I would be like, oh, I need to this I need this reverb to be different. Mm -hmm. But I but I actually I very often start with something that I know works um, and then go from there. And what I also do sometimes is I have um, a drum reverb bus where I have different types of reverb, you know, made inactive on it, so I can switch between them and listen to, do I like this plate on this? No, switch it off. Do I like this one? No, you know, stuff yeah. like that. So, um, which is again, to me, to, to make things a little fast so I don't have to reach for and think, you know, and find a plug-in, put on, and then listen. They, they're just... That's actually what John and Douglas and I used to do when we were mixing stuff together is we would have a template that brought in like 10 reverbs. Yeah. Just all different kinds. Like sense. Play, yeah. rooms, like whatever, like just all... And same with delays and just basically all the effects that we probably would use at some point. Yeah. And then over the course of the mix, we'd just be removing them and we knew we didn't... Yeah need them in there yeah. or in deactivating and hiding. But, um, but yeah, it, make, it makes a lot of sense because even though you might end up using something new, 85% of the time, you're probably going to use, like is it with reverbs and stuff, something yeah. you like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that there's something about the, the, the mindset. It's kind of, you know, you're reminded that you actually have 10 different reverbs. If mm -hmm. you see them there sitting and they're inactive, you, you'll be like, oh yeah, maybe I should listen to this one, which is a good thing because if it's, if it's just a... When you point to the screen, they oh, can't sorry, see. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, I know, yeah. It's stupid, but yeah. <laughs> but but um, if, you, if, you have, um, if you have a, just one plug-in, uh, one reverb plug, plug-in on, uh, on your bus, you will, I think you will automatically start there and just tweak that one but if you have 10 ready to turn on you can you can you'll be reminded that oh maybe you should check out this plate or maybe you should check out this one and you know so, so which i think is a great thing so um in this session i i've already chosen what i liked for this um but normally i would have you know two three different ones sitting there waiting mm -hmm. and and yeah being inactive so yeah that was the the drum reverb, and then I have this is um, this is called snare out, and that is a little weird. But this is a place where I send all my snares to this bus, and um, that is sending to my uh, drum reverb, because then I can control how much I want to send to the reverb and I can EQ if I want and I can limit if I want. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes it gets, it can get a little out of control, the room or, you know, especially using uh, different samples and, and things. So I, I found out, out this way that I could have this, you know, this little bus sitting there and, and, and I could control the, the send from there. Plus, um it's uh now it's 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 not turned on or it's not you know it's uh where is it just a sec yeah it's it's sitting here and if i feel like wow I'm, you know the the 
kick or, or the snare isn't cutting through the mix enough. I just need this little little bit extra. Mm -hmm. I can you know I can raise this you know and I can get um, uh, how do you say a direct you know all my snares go to this one and I, I have you know I, I have one fader that I can lift so I get a little bit more of snare yeah. and um, and this is not in my drum bus so this is you know outside of my drum bus so I can lift it without you know if I would lift all the snares on the snare faders, <laughs> I would um, maybe just hit the drum bus compression ceiling and nothing would really happen or it would just be more smashed or something. This way I can kind of, you know, put it outside of the, the bus and makes maybe... makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not... I'm not using it very much in, in this session. It's not, you know, I'm not lifting it there because there's plenty. You but can imagine... You probably used it on the flesh guy that could be yeah I can't remember but but that could be and sometimes it's it's yeah it's it's good to have this this fader that that's you know not I mean, compressing all the snares and it, it's 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 just like pretty flat and you can you can turn it up and there, there you have it uh, and that that was just an idea I, I had at one time it's it's being limited a little bit as you can see here, uh, being in control. But that is sending to the drum reverb. It's in pre-fader because the fader is, is all the way down. That's why. Yeah, let's uh, continue the, the, the bus walkthrough. Here's, um, here's where all my, my shells are ending. This is, uh, this is the bus where snares, um, toms and actually also let's see if the room is ending there yeah the room is ending there as well um, so this is without this is more or less the whole kit or the, the shell snare toms room end there and not the kick drum and not overheads hi-hats and, mm -hmm. and spot mics on on the cymbals um, that is normally something I want to keep unprocessed by uh, the drum group where I will heavily um, parallel process. And I, because cymbals and stuff start sounding nuts. It's going to be crazy. I like the, the how do you say, the, the, the natural sound of, of the overhead track has to, has to be pretty, to me, to, normally pretty uncompressed. Uh, it depends of, on how it's recorded, of course, but 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 that that to me should be pretty natural mm -hmm. and not overly squashed. How, whereas snare and toms can be, to me, squashed quite a, a bit. Also, the rooms can be squashed. So that's what's happening. And here, these are made inactive. These are parallel um, drum buses. So they're they're actually just a. A duplicate of this one where I do some processing. We'll, we'll get to that later. Then we get to the bass track where I have this one bus where these two bass tracks end, um, where I do some quite a lot of processing really. Um, that sends that track sends to a um, uh, something I call B spread. This is bass. This is a, a spreader on, on, on the bass to get it wide and 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 I like the um, I li like the the clank of the bass to be kind of wide, so it's a little mm -hmm. short room, ambience room, and a, and a little bit of chorus thing going on. And uh, this is in stereo. What's that? And it's in stereo. It's in stereo. I like. I I don't know why, but I'm I'm. You'll see once I get going, but. But there aren't, I mean, many of my mono th things are actually not mono. They are being spread a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm not the big uh, <laughs> mono fan. It's, to me, it's got to be wide. It, it's that, I like that. Even the bass, but, but not the low end of the bass. You'll see how I do that later. Then we get to the guitars. They go to these buses. There's one untreated bus. 
um, here that has nothing on it. It's just to make a parallel um, bus. So, th so I d just make a copy of that and um, I slap on a, a compressor on, on that. So I have like a parallel track. I can blend in a, a, a compressed um, bus where all four guitars end that I'm compressing and I can blend that into an uncompressed uh, signal. And those two, um, the, the parallel bus here, ends on uh, an overall guitar bus. That, that is, um, that's being EQ'd and processed in, in different ways. And that's also making it easy for me to to balance all four guitars at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when you know when I want to have some excitement happening somewhere or there's a riff coming, you know I can bump up the guitars on that bus and not think about did I remember to do it on all four or what what not. Makes it easy. Also, I can do uh, things that I normally do a lot. Is I have sometimes ascend on that. Um, guitar bus that's sending to some some reverb and some delays and some effects. So if there's a part all of a sudden in the rhythm guitars that needs, you know, oh, here's here's a melodic part all of a sudden in the rhythm guitars, then I can just turn up some, some effects real quick and take it away again if, if it uh, goes into another part. Back to the theme of having things ready to go. Just because you know that this is gonna happen in one yeah. song, sooner or later and then you don't have to think okay how do i and then open new or make new tracks and put on new plugins and work so, on i mean that. even if you don't have like a 100 percent preset template you do have like kind of it's i mean yeah. this is about as much of a template as i ever used but just it's more about not having to spend time doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. That's not creative, it's just a mechanical process yeah. of making a bus and routing things. And yeah, because I, I'm, I mean, of course, this, this is not, you know, how I normally start a mix with all these things mm -hmm. ready, but they are, I can import them yeah. as they are without, you know, some of them have a little processing and others don't because I I also don't want to repeat myself and and use the same all the time. Yeah. So, but but then again, like you're saying, there are some things that you will yes, you need different types of reverb and different types of delays all the time, and you need you know some something that you've realized works really well with your workflow. You you gotta save that and keep that for later because those you know this you know way of being efficient those um say minutes that you're wasting or the, there will be hours on a monthly basis on a on a year it's maybe spending a week on fumbling after the the same you, you know what i mean mm -hmm. and and that means i can mix instead of you know thinking in a how do you say uh, uh, i can be creative rather than than just doing slave work yeah. you know <laughs> 